Uh, Hyde Harris uh, is um, our global leader also for uh, for products. Let's uh, wait for Hyde. Uh, Hi, everybody. How are you? Can, okay. Hello, Heidi. So, Hello. if it, yeah, yeah, let's let's start. Okay, we have uh, okay. your time here. Thank you very much. All right, great. Yeah. All right. Buenas noches. Um, I I wanted to take um, some time today to talk about our commercial offerings when it comes to prostate imaging. Um, you know, kind of building off of, you know, what Rob had talked about and applying it into a clinical setting. And then Dr. Voyages will be probably taking this even further uh, on prostate imaging as well. So uh, just some simple uh, prostate cancer facts. You know, one in nine men over the age of 50 um, are diagnosed with prostate imaging. Obviously, the earlier was detected, the better prognosis long term. Um, and this is, you know, the average age is about 66 uh, when um, cancer is detected. And of course, that can always range anywhere between 50 and 70 years old. Um, this is the fastest growing clinical area. We've looked at data, whether it's, you know, in the U.S. or, or globally, that this is where we've seen the, um, the highest percentage of growth uh, opportunity. And that's simply because we have a better care pathway, uh, which offers a non-invasive solution as opposed to high PSA, go for a biopsy, to go for you know, an MR maybe. Um, and you know, going that route, um, you have a tendency, you know, it's kind of a blind uh, biopsy, uh, but you have a tendency to, to miss about 20% of those, uh, those cancers. So you know, with, the, you know, with the scientific community, we're, we, they've been proving the fact that MR, I'm sorry, high, B val high, B value, high PSA, and inserting an MR in between you know, and be able to stage where that cancer is or identify according to um, the standards um, and then sending for a biopsy to be able to, you know, have a more targeted approach. Um, with prostate MR and what we've really been able to do with our, with Air Recon DL and our air solutions is be able to um, provide a simply better experience. Uh, flexible coils, blanket-like coils. Um, we know our, our customers are, are the patients that we're targeting aren't the most, uh, you know, don't necessarily want to be there. So we want to offer uh, probably the best experience that we can. Um, we have a number of, of coils available, whether that's the large anterior array or the more targeted um, MP array or the multi-purpose large or medium to be able to cover. Uh, with our prostate commercial release, uh, we have a full wing-to-wing -wing solution. So as I mentioned that, you know, the flexibility and the comfort of the air coils, utilizing Air Recon DL in the, um, the exam itself, the sequences itself, um, and then being able to quantify that uh, with deep learning um, ProView, which allows us to, um, to, to, to identify and stage as well as report um, what that PIRED score is. Um, so we're very excited about being able to you know, soon into the future, be able to provide a full wing-to-wing -wing deep learning um, experiment, so or experience, so improving that speed and, and contrast. Um, as Rob had shown before, before you know what Ericon brings, Ericon DL brings to uh, whether it's prostate imaging or, or in general, taking those noisy images and being able to. Uh, you know, capture the signal, but remove the noise and improve the resolution. So how does that play out into prostate imaging? Um, you know, with the resolution, we're looking to, you know, it's all about the PIRADS and the scoring when, when, it's, um, when it delivers. So very strict um, uh, parameters that are used, really built off the 3T. With Air Recon DL, we're able to exceed what those, um, those values are and the resolution standards um, and, still, and, and still maintain the image quality. And if not, or if anything else, improve that, but also to be able to achieve the PIRADS in a 1.5T, uh, which opens up a lot of uh, different opportunities, whether it's expanded service line, or if, it's, if you're able to move uh, a patient off the 3T into the 1.5 for whatever reason. But not only that, we're able to do that in a 10 or 15 minute time period. Um, so just looking at the PIRADS um, protocol, three T2s, a diffusion, and a dynamic scan. Um, and then, you know, 
whether you achieve that in the 10 minutes or if it opens up the possibility to add some additional sequences, maybe a large field of view to check for any sort of lymph nodes. And as Rob was talking about too, you know, the SNR that you're gaining and higher B value opportunity um, to really in general be able to reduce the scan time on the critical diffusion sequences. But also, you know, the, reducing the, the slice thicknesses to three millimeters, you know, if the T2s, it'll line exactly to the T2s um, as an overlay. So something uh, which was always challenging before. So let's look at signal to noise. Um, this is off of one of our, uh, our three T systems, uh, being able to capture each one of the, the T2 images you know, in less than two minutes. Um, I know that this site in particular may not um, adhere to um, the pyrite standards in particular, but was necessarily going for more of the speed. And that's what we're seeing here is no trade off between the image quality or speed and signal um, of that exam. Focus diffusion uh, reduces the phase field of view um, within the direction and also helps um, drive image quality and, and resolution in itself. Um, and talking about speed, you know, as we mentioned, diffusions, as you know, is the most critical sequence. And looking at a conventional protocol of, you know, 1.8 by 1.8 at three minutes or three millimeters, looking at about a four minute exam. With Air Recon DL, we're able to not only improve the voxel size, uh, but also do it in a faster scan period. So increasing the sharpness um, and resolution by 30%, um, but also making it faster. You all know that MR is always about trade-offs and with Air Recon DL, we don't have to make those choices. So as I mentioned earlier, exceeding this, uh, the specifications on uh, the PyRed specifications with 3T, um, 0.4 by 0.7 by 3 is the PyRAD standard. So here we're able to um, drive that down even further uh, with about, you know, an under a minute and 30 seconds. You know, again, um, being able to, you know, improve that voxel size and the slice thickness uh, overall. We know that this is probably the most critical sequence uh, when it comes to our T2s. Um, and then again, with it, with the coronals being able to capitalize on that as well. Um, Diffusions, uh, so we utilize an 800 and then synthetically created the 2500. That can either be done you know, at the scanner automatically or even done afterwards, let's say the patient had left and you don't have to call them back for an additional scan. You can simply scroll through um, the different B values within there. Um, for our dynamic scans, uh, we'll, we'll go over a few of the options. Um, DISCO provides us a faster temporal faster temporal resolution um, and spatial resolution. So we're not sacrificing. In this, re, in this example, we're able to get down to eight seconds per phase. Should you not want to um, affect that or a water, that water separation, that can get down even lower to maybe about three seconds. Uh, we utilize hypersense on there to improve, the, to improve that speed and resolution as well. So we talked about you know, exceeding the high-res resolution, but what about achieving them on a 1.5? Well, if you tried that today, we're looking at about a 45 to 60 minute exam um, on men that probably don't want to be there in the first place. So you know, being able to provide, uh, to provide a faster solution uh, really helps our, our patient population. So again, uh, looking at the PyRed standards, all being able to do that under three minutes um, on our uh, diffusion sequences, we can um, synthetically create those higher B values as well as the ADC and then offer a dynamic sequence with that. Um, we recently just actually in this current issue of Signal Pulse, we did an article on prostate imaging for, 1.5, um, for the 1.5 T system. So um, you talking with three of our KOLs, uh, globally, and they provided their experience and helped, um, you know, give ex examples and how they utilize it in their place. So in one particular area is hip implants. Um, we know that doing it on a 3T inherently um, has challenges when it comes to metal within the body and, and having that distortion. Um, so it, it's, it's on a 1.5, it's greatly reduced. And if we think about if the average age for prostate cancer is 66, average age for a hip implant 
is 65. And of course, all these things can happen between the age 50 and 70. Um, how are you actually imaging those patients? And you know, maybe even later as they get an implant, how do you follow up with them over time? Are you constantly, you know, do you go year after year and do a biopsy when you may miss 20% of those biopsies? Or, you know, what if you had a solution in a non-invasive way with MR, for example, um, to be able to improve that? Here's a great example on the 1.5 bilateral hip implants. Uh, and we noticed that we're not necessarily getting that ballooning artifact or uh, where it's impeding into the, um, the prostate itself. Um, metal, you know, metal within the body, of course, these are on MR conditional implants. Um, on a diffusion is especially challenging because you don't have that uh, echo train to help refocus the pulse. So in this case, we're still able to get a really great diffusion sequence and be able to identify uh, the lesion within them. Um, coincidentally, was on site at, at a customer's site and the patient you know, was scheduled for uh, the uh, MRI of the prostate. They scheduled them on the 3T and wouldn't you know it, he had a hip implant. So um, luckily this site had a 1.5 that was right across the, the way. Um, so we did do some scans on the 3T. Uh, we noticed that you know, the, the artifact that starts to kind of impede into you know, the, the hip area or just outside the joint and how it's more well-preserved on the 1.5. Um, overall image quality, you're getting better signal to noise in this area as well. But as I mentioned, Diffusion, the hardest sequence to be able to refocus that, um, that artifact. And here it is on the 3T, you know, this big ballooning artifact. Prostate should be here, um, but we're also seeing that other hip implant. So how do you make your diagnosis on there? Well, when we move them to the 1.5T, um, we were not only able to get a better diffusion um, without that ballooning type of artifact, but we're able to establish that this patient actually had a, a PIRAD score five um, in there. So not only does he have a, a, a care pathway where if he goes for a biopsy, which I'm assuming he would, he, they can automatically see directly where they're going for. But not only that, is now they're able to continue to follow their care um, afterward to see if there's any reoccurrence of tumor and so on. So again, really extending and opening that availability for patients that we really weren't able to scan before. And since Aricon DL is available across our entire commercial offerings, it really gives us a lot of opportunity. Um, patient comfort, let's consider that. Endorectal coil was always the, the choice, um, you know, especially early on to be able to gather that signal. Um, but from the study that was actually done out of MD Anderson, they found that the air coil plus Aricon DL really provided um, better or you know, the same if not better um, of experience. So not only was it more comfortable, but actually we're getting better image quality. So here um, with the endorectal coil, you'll always get some, you know, the, since the coil is here, you'll always get some sort of signal uh, intensity that starts to even go outside the area. Um, here we're not losing any of the signal to noise, we're actually maintaining it and we're able to reduce that artifact. Um, so feel free to um, use the QR code to capture the, the paper, but really at the outcome and the conclusion is that prostate imaging without the use of endorectal coil um, and utilizing um, Aricon DL really makes a difference for them. Uh, Dr. Odo, very big in the prostate uh, world and helps, you know, works within the PIRADS to help identify them. Strong proponent of the endorectal coil. I worked with him. We tried to get him off of that, but did not, uh, did not budge. Uh, but he really felt, you know, in their practice that um, Aricon DL and the air coil has given him the confidence to be able to move away from the endorectal coil. So again, University Hospital being able to provide a better um, opportunity. And, and in this case, it, it, for example, the patient refused uh, the endorectal coil and we can see why he has a pretty substantial um, um, enlarged prostate. So looking at a large field of view imaging, we have a number of T2s that are available, whether it's single shot, uh, 3D cube or um, a lava sequence to be able to get that broader um, 
coverage, and we can use that one post CAD. Um, but also looking at our diffusion options. Rob walked through why these, you know, what the benefit is of Air Recon DL is for um, for diffusion. E you know, whether it's the EPI, which is for a larger field of view, focus to reduce the phase field of view and help to reduce the distortion. Uh, Muse, which is our multi-shot diffusion, and then of course uh, the synthetic uh, diffusion or magic DWI um, that we have to offer. All with the exception of Muse are compatible with Air Recon DL. So continuing to drive the improved signal to noise, um, higher B values without that uh, added extra time. Uh, we have a great example of, you know, just the choices of, of diffusion. So whether that's the EPI sequence, or, you know, just the standard diffusion, what focus actually brings in, you, know, you can see that, um, the, you know, a lesion that's here that it's identified better or the multi-shot uh, use image. Uh, which also helps um, drive that even further. Um, and then example, you know, another example of uh, focused diffusion with a pretty um, substantiated uh, lesion. They mentioned uh, synthetic DWI performed right directly on the scanner as you know automatically once the scan is done. But it, you know, let's let's alleviate the problem for the patient to come back. If there is a lesion that is bright on a 1400, but you want to see what it looks like on a 2000 or a 2500, just simply move the, the slider bar and it'll be able to um, reduce the patient to actually have to come back. Our dynamic sequence, so kind of filling out that whole PIRADS, um, the protocol, various flavors, if you will, um, whether you're looking for a high temporal resolution or if you're looking for you know, a, a fat set or a non-fat set sequence. Um, and that just really kind of helps identify um, what that will bring to you in your clinical practice. You know, kind of putting the whole piece together, you know, whether you're doing the disco for that, uh, the temporal resolution to be able to uh, characterize the permeability um, with Gen IQ, or, um, or you know, just being able to provide the fusion um, of you know, either GenIQ or the diffusion over that, um, all are, are easily at your fingertips. As I mentioned before, I know that, that um, many might be familiar with ProView DL. Again, it uses the deep learning uh, based lesion segmentation um, to help not only calculate the, the PSA density, but the measurements um, for an easy scoring and reporting. Um, you can be able to, um, calculate the, the, the prostate volume, uh, the lesion, and then be able to score that directly. You can paste the, the lesion, um, or it automatically adds the lesion um, onto the sector maps, um, which is always, you know, if we wanna move that, then that's fine. Um, and then the output of a PDF report, which you can send over to PACS or send over to the referring physician. Um, and you can, you know, capture any of these images directly uh, on the report as well. So don't take my word for it. Uh, we have a number of collaterals that um, our, our, our colleagues um, and um, you know, radiologists from all over the world have, have talked about their experience. Um, we captured all, many of the, the body, product, uh, body articles as well as prostate in our Body Works Signa Pulse article, um, booklet, I should say. Um, and then in this recent issue of Signa Pulse, which is out now, and again, you can use the QR codes to capture both of these. Uh, we walk through, um, you know, how do I choose what dynamic 3D um, to use throughout the body? And then, as I mentioned earlier, the PIRADS, um, you know, being able to achieve the PIRADS on a 1.5 um, and, you know, talking with, you know, one of our, our imaging centers um, in Germany, uh, one of our, you know, larger hospital systems in, in Virginia, and um, at a academic hospital with uh, um, Houston Methodist. And so with that, I'd like to close and thank you very much for um, the opportunity to talk further about this. And I'll turn it back over to you. Hi, Dean. Thank you very much again. Thank you for our presentation, Tarifki. Uh, actually, the images are <laughs> great. I mean, and uh, and, and we have one question related to that. Sure. Uh, we know that uh, prostate are more, more focused on 3T, right? Usually. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, do you think 
with every con DL, do you think that demand will drive it also to 1.5T uh, because of the, the image quality? I, you know, from feedback that we've gotten from, from our customers, um, they, have, they have been able to um, either expand the services. So, you know, maybe on an imaging center where they do only have a 1.5, you know, and, and you know, we've, they've been able to achieve it, right? But, you know, in a 50 to 60 minute time period, you know, that takes a lot of time um, out, of, out of the workflow of the daily schedule. Here, we're able to achieve the, the PIRAD. Um, in an acceptable amount of time for those patients. So even if it's, you know, two patients an hour, that opens up, you know, a lot more opportunity within there. But I certainly welcome, you know, everybody else's feedback and experience with that um, as well. But, you know, as I mentioned in that article, they really walk through, you know, hey, I was, you know, I've always used 3T, but now this really opens up, especially for the hip implants, you know, for the patients that can't go on a 3T. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Well, Heidi, thank you very much again. Thank you for coming you. for the, the Signals Masters uh, Latin and hope that okay. next year will be in person, okay? <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks okay. again for the opportunity. Thank, thank you.